Hebrews chapter 1 keeps telling us Jesus is better. It was so important that the writer of Hebrews communicates that to Christians who had a Jewish background. That's one of the reasons I love the book of Hebrews. It elevates Christ to his proper place. Let's talk about that today in the Word. Good morning and welcome back to Today in the Word. Hi, I'm Glenn Schaefer and thank you for joining us in the book of Hebrews. We're right here in chapter 1. As always, we remind you to be sure and subscribe, push that subscribe button and notification so that you will be notified uh, when these teachings come out as we have just now entered the book of Hebrews. If you're listening to us on podcast, we want to welcome all of you who have joined in. Today, we're in Hebrews chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 4 and go down through verse 6. Just a few verses here, but highlighting the importance of of Jesus's place. So let's jump right in the reading of God's word. Having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. What does that mean, having become much better than the angels? Well, let's look at it in the context, because obviously Jesus eternally existed, created the angels, and as God would be better than the angels. But to the Hebrews, this Christ who came to this earth in the form of human flesh, he's making a point of his superiority. One of the reasons this is important is that they would see how he is declared exalted by the work that he did. Even though he was eternally better, we could say that he became better. That's what the writer is saying, made perfect, through sufferings, through the cross, what he did for them, he was given a name and exalted, that name that's above every name. You see this explained later in chapter 2, so I'll go ahead and read verse 10 of chapter 2, for it says, for it was fitting for him, talking about Jesus, for whom are all things and by whom are all things. Though he was God from the beginning and is God, and is through whom all things and by all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect or complete through suffering. So the fact that Jesus did something the angels could not do is to pay the price of redemption. He was given a name and exalted. It's called a more excellent name. The superiority of his status is demonstrated by the superior name. He was given that name and exalted. Now, there's many reasons why we understand this, but the Jews venerated the angels and they saw them at a high place and even got involved in worshiping them. And the reason they did is because the angels brought the law to Moses. God had the angels bring Moses the law. So they saw the angels as a superior place. And there was a false teaching that Jesus was just another angel. So the writer of Hebrews is working out this doctrine to make it clear. Now we're told in Acts 7, 30 or 53, you who have received the law that was given through the angels have not obeyed it. Stephen told them that, but he makes a point that the law was given to them by the angels. Galatians 3, 19 affirms the same thing. Why then was the law given at all? It was added because of transgression until the seed, Jesus Christ, to whom the promise referred had come. The law was given through angels and entrusted to a mediator. So the angels were seen as very important and superior as they gave the law to Moses. And so any Jewish Christian or any Christian that had a Jewish background, it was important for them to see who Jesus actually was. Though the old covenant came to Moses by the angel's hand, so to speak. There's a better covenant came by a better being, if you please, Jesus. So these first century Jews, they might have thought that the gospel came by mere men because it was the apostles that preached the gospel. And so the writer of Hebrews is trying to show that, wait a minute, this came from God himself. The gospel didn't come by men, 
nor even by angels, but by one who is superior to the angels, Jesus himself. Now, in the process, there is a dangerous tendency for some people to worship the supernatural. In fact, I'm a charismatic, I'm a Pentecostal, and I believe in all the manifestations of the gifts. But it bothers me when people become so mystical and supernatural that they brag about their visions and seeing of angels and different events. I'm not saying that we don't even entertain angels unaware or that some person would never see an angel, but you have to be careful that there's not some kind of false glamour that's associated with it. Paul warned the Colossians about it. He says, let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. So sometimes in the mind, we can want to see things more spiritually and sound more spiritual than we can exalt our experiences with angels. So when I hear people bragging or talking about experiences with angels, I'm always a little cautious about that because it draws attention to them rather than Christ. Some of those experiences need to be carried in our heart. Now that's important because in Galatians 1.8, it says, but even if we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than what we've preached to you, let him be accursed. So Paul's saying, it was me or some angel. <laughs> Don't see something outside of the revelation of the true gospel. So any heretical idea that Jesus himself was an angel, that writer of Hebrews is dealing with that and cutting away. So wait a minute, no, this is Christ. And we're going to see even later here in this chapter where God calls Jesus Lord by the scriptures. That's important because Jesus is superior to the angels because he is the son of God. And we see that in Psalm 2 as well as in 2 Samuel. Let's read verse 5. And this is the reference that the writer of Hebrews is trying to make. Not only is he superior to angels, but he's superior because he is the son of God. And God declares him as such. He says in verse 5, For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father, and he will be to me a son. Now it's interesting how the New Testament here gives us quotes from the Old Testament. The first quote that comes is right there from Psalm 2-7, when it says, to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son? Today I have begotten you. Now this begottenness is a declaration of being supreme or superior or first. It's not being born in that sense. We do know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, he was the firstborn through that process of creation as we are born, and he's the first fruits of that, but that's not what this is referencing. When he says, I have begotten you, he's actually talking about being exalted and declared as begotten. Today, I have begotten you. Now, not only does Psalm 2 say that, but God the Father in this process is speaking to God the Son. That's very important that we see the scriptures describing Jesus the Christ as God. The word begotten, of course, as we mentioned, means it's he's of the essential nature, that he's as the Father and the Son. It means that the Father and Son share the same being. So he's begotten. He is declared pre preeminent over all. He says, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. That's a direct quote out of 2 Samuel chapter 7 the first part of verse 14, I will be his father and he shall be my son. Now, this is an example of a double imagery of prophecy because it was spoken to David about David and Solomon would be his son, but it's fulfilled in Jesus as the son of David in the fulfillment of the more perfect fulfillment. So when he says, I've begotten you, you'll be my son. This was the work of God. Jesus is superior than the angels because God calls him God by referring to him as his son. He's also superior because the angels worship 
Jesus and serve Jesus. So he's making a strong point that Jesus is superior and he's divine because the angels worship him. Deuteronomy 32, verse 43. Now let's read verse six here. It says, but when he again brings the firstborn into the world, talking about Father God, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him and of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Let's go to that portion, when he brings the firstborn. Well, since the firstborn is first in line, it's a position of favor. That's what he means. When he brought his firstborn into the world, it's that high place. There are those who were not born first that were called firstborn. David was not the firstborn, but he was called the firstborn. In Psalm 89 and 27, he says, And I will make him my firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. Again, that's a messianic prophecy spoken to David, who was not the firstborn, but was made supreme as the highest king of the earth. That word is also about the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed. I will make him my firstborn. He'll be preeminent. He's designated as first in line. He's designated in a, in a position and place of honor and glory. In fact, it was understood that that was a title. The firstborn was the preeminent. And in that passage, it says, let all the angels of God worship him. Now, what this shows is Jesus is superior and that they worship him. We see that in the scriptures, but it's laid out very clearly in Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, when John the Revelator says, Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. The angels worship him. They not only worship him, but he makes his angels, the spirits, his ministers of flame. They serve him. He is superior. Psalm 104, verse 4, Jesus Messiah is Lord over the angels. Why? Because that is the actual quote from Psalm 104. He makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. They are his angels. They are his ministers. They are his servants. So we see over and over, the writer of Hebrews is going to show the exalted Lord in Christ is above all angels. He is declared as the Son of God. He is worshiped by heaven's host. <laughs> and what he's making a point and the case for is that we have a great salvation offered through Jesus Christ. That's what I like about the book of Hebrews, is it is an exaltation of Jesus. Thank you for joining us today in the Word.